Hi everyone, uh, I'm Thomas Picard, and my self-tracking talk tonight is on restless leg syndrome and niacin. Quick show of hands, uh, how many folks in the audience have heard of restless leg syndrome? Wow, what an important audience, great. Um, whoa, so am I on autopilot or not? Both, it will advance every 15 seconds. Oh, well then let's just pretend it's on autopilot. Okay. okay. Well, well it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, for those, a few of you that haven't heard of restless leg syndrome before, uh, this is an uncomfortable feeling in your legs that is often relieved by moving them. Uh, it's often accompanied by what I call leg jerks. Uh, the symptoms are usually worse at night. And depending on whom you ask, uh, between 5 and 15, about 10% of the population suffers from this ailment. What does it look like? This is a, a QSer from Germany who looked at sleep. RLS uh, definitely can interfere with sleep, which you're looking at across the top. It's a sleep pattern of a person with RLS compared to a normal person down to the bottom. But what about with me, restless leg syndrome? Um, since my 20s I've had this, I was diagnosed 10 years ago uh, with restless leg. Uh, that's a lot of years of kicking my wife. So that's uh, <laughs> what that means. I've been taking clonazepam uh, for 10 years now. I started off with two and a half milligrams of this stuff a day. Uh, that led to some what I call drug experiments, which were early QS work in terms of figuring out the right dose. Um, that led to uh, an MBA a couple years ago and some work in genomics. <laughs> Uh, and uh, ultimately to 23andMe and having my genome sequence, or part of my genome sequence, which leads us to Genomera, uh, which is a, uh, a startup here in the Bay Area where you combine uh, genomics and, and, and this idea of, of, of crowdsourcing health discovery. Uh, it's kind of like Facebook with your genome. I posted my 23andMe results. So what we do here is um, we have a study. It was on Russell Slick Syndrome. Uh, it was inspired by Seth Roberts' jo uh, blog post on it. Uh, Janet Chang put it together. The idea is that over a four-week period, you ramp up to a gram of niacin every day, vitamin B3. Um, what we do in, geno in Genomera then is track um, the, the results here. And the idea is there's a day and how much niacin you're taking. Uh, there's some slider bars for flushing in the sensation, some notes, you click save, and you, you, you put that in, and you save it for the next day. So um, from there, we share this data, and that's stored in a spreadsheet. What you're looking at here is the actual results of my study data. Um, but as more people join the study, I am the first. But as more people join the study, then this uh, grows over time. And then this information can be um, analyzed by other folks and to see the effectiveness of the study. I did use some other uh, instruments along the way. I used Fitbit for measuring my sleep. We'll talk about that in a minute. I used uh, a tonic, an application that's talked about in this meeting before to remind me to take niacin. I dropped my Fitbit in the washing machine. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so here are the results. Um, as the meds go down, the symptoms go up. And this is really what this uh, talk is about. On the left-hand side, one through five, uh, how my restless leg felt uh, on the bottom, the, the six-week period. So there is a, a period of stability. There is a, a, a taper down. There is a washout of a week. And the green is the niacin going into it. My symptoms got worse and worse, uh, up to a five, which means that I'm irritable and I don't like being around anybody. No one likes being around me. So after uh, halfway through the study, I actually abandoned this study because my symptoms were not getting any better and I didn't feel good. Second part of this question was, how well am I really sleeping? This gets back to the first slide. And this is a, a screenshot from Fitbit. Um, normal tracking, uh, the sensitive tracking shows that kind of like that first slide, I may not be getting a really good night's sleep. And you'll notice there are a hole, that's where I lost my Fitbit. Um, so then I went and talked to my doctor about restless leg. We had a nice discussion about the genomic, genetic aspects of this. He had some website stuff to go to. And we talked about that. And he said, let's check your serum ferritin level. I was like, that's interesting. So um, I was learning about you know, the genetic factors. I'm very interested in this. 40% of the time it's inherited. Uh, 23 and Me has recently come up with a new update. Um, and I'm kind of like mixed ricks, mis mixed ricks for this. Uh, a shout out to do-it-yourself genomics for a little app you can put on your iPhone and the various genes that they track. Um, I, I learned a lot there. So what, do we, what about ferritin? We all know that um, hemoglobin carries oxygen to the blood. Uh, I do great with the hemoglobin, give blood, and that's going great. But ferritin is the protein that stores iron in the body. And it turns out that, what do you know, my ferritin was very low. So what's the theory is that restless leg patients may have some strange thing going on in their brain or body storing of iron. We know this because we take in people's brains apart that have restless leg syndrome. We find out that there's not a lot of iron in their brains. So the idea is add more iron, maybe it gets better. So what did I learn? I learned that niacin didn't help me at all. Uh, the low ferritin may be the cause. Um, it's really great to work with a quant-friendly doc when you do this. It can be uncomfortable to do quantified self-work. 
And if this actually is successful, I'll be back for another talk. <laughs> uh, for more information, there's some uh, sites if you want to know more about your restless. Anybody here has, anybody else have, in the room have restless leg that wants to raise their hand? One? Okay, good. So um, some other places, uh, Cure Together, a sponsor of this group, really nice um, in terms of uh, some things that helped other people. Uh, this is the, uh, the shameless uh, self-promotion slide. Uh, I have nothing disclosed. I, I'm not representing any of the companies that I've talked to you about tonight. I posted the slides, and um, I like to thank my wife, whom I've been kicking for the last 20 years. <laughs> uh, questions? Well, I'll, I'll just say, jump in and say thank you so much for that talk. One of the things we've talked about a lot over the three years that we've been doing these is how inspiring it is to see somebody uh, take on uh, problems and try to solve them using data, and negative results are really important results, and inspiring also. Right. So um, I'm looking forward to the next talk, and I hope you solve the, the rest of the well, problem. Well, thank you, yeah, I really the, like that. The iron talk. thing, we'll see where that goes. Yeah, we'll see where that goes, so yeah. let's just open it Other up. Other questions? Yes. I have a question, have you tried to food and allergies? Food and allergies, uh, no I have not. Um, have you? Yes, so I had it for 10 years, I only made a gluten, and it's gone. I haven't had it in Interesting point. Um, she eliminated gluten from her diet and her restless leg syndrome is gone. Interesting. Thank you for that. Yeah, good idea. Other questions? Yes. Um, supplementing was niacin. Did, did you do any kind of test before you began to see what your vitamin levels were? Uh, niacin specifically, no. Um, but you can kind of get a sense of this uh, by taking, you get a flush from niacin. And uh, the sooner you get a flush, the more you know that you really don't need it. So what, from what I've read, the folks that are taking, you know, 50, 100 to 500 milligrams of niacin, if they're not flushing, it means that they really are vitamin B de deficient. And, uh, and what I found was I flushed right away. So, you know, probably I, I'm, I'm okay there. Sir. How did you quantify your restlessness? Yeah, it's entirely subjective. Um, it, it's this feeling in, in my leg, up the side of my arm, and actually into my face uh, of being very uncomfortable. So it was a sliding scale of one to five, but it was just how was it that I was able to manage through my day? And what about the guy who was doing it during his sleep? What's oh, so right. So th that actually begs an interesting question, which is, um, you know, the, with the Fitbit, you kind of get some useful data. And uh, Joel Betts Lacroix had done a talk on this as well. I think kind of a follow-on to this would be doing a Zeo sleep study and seeing uh, a little bit more quantitatively how uh, my sleep is actually affected. But the guy who's tracking, he was just tracking a Fitbit at night and equivalent. Uh, presumably a Zeo, it actually was. was oh, a Zeo, so just, just physical activity was, was the equivalent of the leg restlessness. Yeah, it, w one of the symptoms of restless leg is, is c can be a bad light sleep. It's very difficult, you know, when you have a broken arm, you can see it. But with restless leg, you can't. So I was trying to demonstrate visually what that might look like. Right. Well, so I was wondering, because I must have missed it, on the Fitbit, did you just wear it on your wrist like they say, or did you put it on your ankle to actually measure your leg? <laughs> Interesting question. Um, I wore it on my, on my wrist. So my guess is the, the, turning, the red stuff is, is flopping around at night. Uh, but indeed, um, uh, the, the, wake, the wakefulness may be from this, this leg jerk thing that happens that may be you know, wake, waking me up. You should, you should try it wearing on your leg. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Right. Adi? Well, one of the interesting things amongst the different talks is we, we just had a note that gluten may have an effect. <clears throat> and then we have an effect on diet and sneezing, which is really uh, allergies and so on. So you have the gut connected with all the other multiple symptoms, sim systems like neurological and immunological. And, and these type of data where you, you measure continuous data over time will put systems together that haven't been thought about before mm -hmm. as, uh, in as open a way as, as it's becoming other. Right, and, and that's a good point is uh, the, the openness part. Being able to t talk in front of an audience and say I'm taking a, a benzodiazepine uh, you know, it, it takes a little bit of, uh, you got to get used to that, right? Um, so uh, this whole, I, this for me was kind of uh, getting used to the idea of, of sharing this stuff as well. But I think in the interest of helping everyone else, that's what Gina Mira is really all about. All the way in the back, yeah. So I'm curious, do you consider the sleep study? Because oftentimes, right. restless leg syndrome is actually a side effect of sleep apnea, or your body actually twitches your leg to make you out. 
Right. Uh, yeah, so I do snore a little bit. Uh, my wife would tell you that as well. Uh, and yes, I think uh, a sleep study kind of is indicated for me at this point based on the data. Uh, I just came back from France yesterday. And one of the things that I ran uh, with that data was my wife was not in bed at, you know, when she was here. And I had the same result. So what that tells me is that my wife and I are bumping into each other in the middle, in the middle of the night. So yes, I, my, my guess would be the next thing would be to try a sleep study. I'm curious about, they, they are starting to unravel some of the genetic associations with restless leg, mm -hmm. but is it totally unknown, the, the, the um, specific physiological cause? Well, uh, the etiology is, is, is relatively unknown. 40% uh, of the time it's uh, inherited. My daughter has some low ferritin issues, and we kind of blew through this, but yes, there are some genetic markers that are starting to give us some clues about the uh, potential causes of this disease. Right, right, but it's relatively it's, This is all in the last, oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah, in the last two years, this, the genetic stuff's all in the last two years, so it's very, very new. Okay, great, thank you so mm -hmm. much.